Welcome to Virtual Realms, I'm Ranger One. We're here again at the beautiful and tranquil Ice Lake Kamaka in my personal lodge. We're not going to stay here long though. I'm just prepping to take you over the waterfall at the end of the lake and we're going to take a closer look at the ruins of Atain. I've been doing some building there and well I'm hoping that you're going to like what I've come up with in that general area. We're establishing a new and massive habitat there and well I think that I think that there's a massive fight going on behind me at the moment that I need to take care of. Uh, can you excuse me for just one moment? Okay, let's try that again. We're going to go over the edge of the falls here. I brought a bird up just for that purpose. And we're going to get to... Uh, we're going to take a closer look at what I've been up to. Whoops, let's use the other one. Hello, buddy. And you might notice that I'm dressed a little oddly for this particular video. Uh, and the reason why is uh, going to become apparent in just a second. Alright, here we go. Just over the waterfall from Ice Lake Kamaka. There's the ruins there. As you can see, I've expanded them quite a bit. I've put a retaining wall over on the right. And I've made a, a breeding pool and breeding facility over on the left. Let's take a, a little closer look. We'll buzz down here. I've got a teleport platform there on the top of the ruins. We're going to let you go park yourself, buddy. Eh, nothing obnoxious has come in. Good boy. Alright, now this is just a little observation post now. It's the section of the ruins that poked up above the water. I've got nothing really major in here right now. It's uh, primarily just a place to come in out of the rain. We're going to not come in out of the rain at the moment. And there's my spot for my bird. And the first floor I have left largely unchanged to allow some of the critters that I have running around here to come in and out all on their own. Namely, wild otters, which are native out here in the lake. I've brought some of them in here and let them run around and they do run in and out of this enclosure fairly regularly. I was going to turn this area down here into part of my breeding facility, but for my breeding facilities to work, the youngsters have to be able to walk freely out of the enclosure by having walls at a certain height uh, above the ground. But creatures in here, uh, tamed and unclaimed creatures alike, uh, they tend to get confused by this structure and they won't walk out to the edge or off the edge. The wild otters are one of the few exceptions. so. They will come up here and they'll hang out for a while, run around for a bit, and then head back into this area, which is, well, more or less, it's a, a, a wet garden, I guess you'd call it. Although I don't have a lot of plants in here, just some lilies. I've got my penguins in here for right now. I'm kind of letting them build up in numbers. Um, the otters like to run around in here as well. And just to keep things interesting, I have also, let me see if I can duck down here, I have also brought in some tropical fish of various types. There's one of my otters. Where did my fish go? They must be over on the other side. Well, there's a tang. There's a young penguin running around sliding along the bottom. There's an angelfish. And I've just got several different varieties swimming around in here. I'll probably put some more plant life down here. They like to hang around here in these lilies, which is fine. The little lionfish doesn't care, though. He does not care at all. There he goes. And most of them do swim around pretty freely here in the uh, garden area. I just thought it was a little bit different. I'll uh, list the mods that I'm using in the description below. The mod to get the fish is Aqua Arc version 1.0. 
So anyway, this is just something a little bit different and unusual that I felt like doing. Oops, what are you? Oh, a little clownfish. That I felt like doing with this ruins. At least the part that's sticking up above the water. That's not really the main part of the Atain ruins, though. Yeah, let's jump out here. And I'll show you what the bulk of this structure actually looks like. The Atain ruins used to be a much larger structure. And it used to be above water, obviously. There were outlying buildings over here on the right. More buildings out in front, what may have been a chapel or an inn, I mean it's hard to tell. I'm thinking that might have been an altar over there on that side. There used to be a, a brook that flowed through here, covered by bridges. Obviously a natural disaster hit this whole area. Let me come back up here above water and I'll, I'll tell you what I think is supposed to have happened in this area. Now that you've seen that channel cut into the floor of this uh, deep lake, I think that apparently, many, many years ago, this waterfall used to come down and it used to flow out that side right over there. But some natural upheaval occurred, some cataclysm. I think part of the plateau collapsed, completely sealing off the area where the brook exited this what was once probably a tranquil valley now once that happened the water level rose completely flooding this what was probably a, a magnificent structure at the time and eventually found its overflow in a low spot right over there well, obviously this structure became pretty much useless to the inhabitants and it was abandoned. So I think that's the, the backstory of the Atain ruins. I could be wrong on that, and I'm sure somebody will correct me if there's other information out there. But that's the way I read it. Now, before we get too crazy with everything, these ruins have another secret. One of them you just caught a glimpse of, glimpse of just a second ago. Let's go back down here. It actually is part of my breeding facility in that I have my sarcos tied up down here and I'm letting them breed. Breeding in water or at the water's edge can have some advantages. The eggs drop freely away, the young swim freely away, they don't get stuck underneath mom and dad's tail. It actually works out pretty well. You can't use this technique with very many creatures though. The Sarcos and Demetrodons, they can handle it just fine, but not everything. Uh, a lot of creatures, when you tie them off to the hitching posts and leave them, well they have a tendency to want to bob to the surface and that breaks your, your line to your hitching post and then they go free. So you have to be careful what you use this technique with. Well, I've shown you one of the secrets of the ruins of Atain, the one that I put there. But there's a much older and deeper and darker secret to these ruins as well. Some of you may already know it, others of you may not, and that's why we're going to include it in this episode. We're going to go look at the underbelly of the ruins of Atain right now. But for that, we're going to have to get wet and we're going to have to get something to get us there in one piece. One of the nice things about having all of these unclaimed offspring running around is all I have to do is make a short swim to claim one of the many creatures roaming around uh, this neck of the woods that has allegiance to me, including this Diplocolis. Let's get hooked up here. All right, we're gonna use him as kind of a jet ski, a submersible rig, and a portable scuba air tank all at once here. And we're gonna go down here and take a little closer look 
at the ruins underbelly. All right, we are on the right side of the ruins as you look at them from the waterfall. And through these outbuildings over here, you can just see that opening there at the base. We're going to slip down in here through the doorway. And there's a set of stairs that go down on either side. A little tight in here, sorry for the camera work. These stairs come down and apparently end. One side flanks on either side, but if we go behind the stairs and back through the center, there's kind of a hidden corridor down here. Let's go through it. And when we get to the end of this corridor, we have a choice. There's an opening to the left and to the right. Let's look to the left first. In here is a storage room. Nothing of note, really. You can't interact with any of this, but, well, it's nicely done. Who knows what was in these casks down here, and, well, I'm not sure I really want to know what was stored over here on the left, uh, or on the right-hand side. Probably foodstuffs. We hope it's foodstuffs. Nothing that we can use right now, though, so let's look over at the secret contained on the other side. And there it is. An artifact. Artifact of the Sky Lord. Now what that's doing down here in the bowels of the Itain ruins, I have no idea. Perhaps a better question is, why was there a bed down here? And on the other side of the room, a set of cages. Hmm. I'm sure it was just a, a, a groundskeeper and his um, faithful hounds that he kept here in his bedroom. Surely it wasn't captives. Anyway, we're going to get out of here if I can get pointed in the right direction. And get back up to the surface. I would not advise trying to free dive this. I suppose you could if you knew exactly where you were going, but if you're going to be exploring, if it's your first time down here, oxygen would be a bit of a problem. So uh, bring some scuba gear or one of these bad boys and you should be able to do just fine. All right, come on, buddy. Let's get up to the surface. There we go. Thanks for the ride. Let's cut you loose. And there he goes. A free creature once again. Kind of like that. I had originally intended to show you quite a bit more of the habitat, but I think we're going to keep this video fairly short and sweet. So for right now, we're going to call it a wrap. Uh, next episode, and perhaps the episode after that, I'm going to show you the actual hatching facilities that I've set up here in this general area. The habitat's actually quite large, stretching from here all the way to Emerald Lake and beyond. And there are a few bases that I have set up uh, along that route of rivers and lakes as well. Uh, hopefully you'll find it interesting. But for right now, we're out of here. And until I see you again... Good hunting. Good Lord, is it ever going to stop raining? Well, that looks pretty cool, though. <laughs>